Come on, say, God is around. Uh -huh. So I am around. I am big enough for you to see me. If you cannot see me, then there is a log in your eye that you yourself is accommodating. You yourself. It's not the enemy. You, 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 you refuse to remove the log in your eyes. But I am around. I'm, I'm, a, big, I'm a big God. I am the Almighty. If you can't see me, sorry, I can't help you. You have to be willing to see me. Then you will see me. And those of you who have come to seek God early, you will find him. I said you will find him. <laughs> so that's what the Lord is saying. Jesus Christ is telling you and I. There's an area in your life that you want perfection. But can you see Jesus around that area? <laughs> and what is your response to Jesus? Are you responding to what life is pounding at you are you responding to the wind are you responding to the water coming into your boat are you have, are you are you already anticipating death in that situation are you already broken down by what you know the devil can do my question to you is that what is it do you, what is the thing that you think that god can do in circumstance like that how come you are looking at what the devil can do and you are already responding to the things that the devil can do how come you are not seeing what God can do and you are not responding to the things which God can do and yet he's the one that wants to perfect that which concerns you hmm. thank you Jesus He will perfect that which concerns you. I'm praying for somebody that from today you will see Jesus. In every circumstance of your life, you will see Jesus. No matter what is happening to you, negative or positive, I want you to see Jesus. I mean, you should pray, Lord, I want to see you. You know, see, I want in that my private matter, I want to see you. Hallelujah. Concerning this issue, this area, I want, I want to see you. I don't want to be seeing this, this fear. Let me tell you something. Fear is absolutely visible. But <laughs> if you must allow the God, if you want to allow the God that can perfect that which concerns you, your faith has to be absolutely visible. It is war between light and darkness. And it is not, it's a, the war is a done deal. Light will always win. That is why I know faith will always win. Amen. Genuine faith will always win. But men, being frail as we are, because we are not, the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Praise God. We are supposed to see the unseen and we begin to deal with the unseen like what is seen. God calling these, those things which be not as though they were. God has faith. You should have faith. Praise God. I said God has faith. You should have faith. Glory be to Jesus. So when circumstances are daring, time is running, you can see the, you, then, then all those will just be cloud what you can see. some of us we can't even see God even though we shout Jesus you can't even still see Jesus because if you can see Jesus you will not be acting towards the fear your works will not be towards what the devil is throwing at you it will be towards what God can do with God all things how many things all things are possible how come you are now swimming inside what the devil can do? Ask yourself, who brought the wind? Who brought, who, who, who made that circumstance to start coming to you? That, that, was that the will of God? Because when God rose up, he said, peace be still. Whatever that wants to take your peace, I speak to that situation. Peace be still. Yeah. I say, peace be still. Yeah. Come on, I say, peace be still. Because that's the will of God concerning you. They were disciples, so and yet they were lacking in their faith. How is it that you don't even have faith at all? You know, look at what is written there now. How is it that you have no faith? Can you imagine? Not that they have little faith. Oh. That situation just showed that this one, they are my disciple, but they don't have faith at all. 
who said that one? Was it me? Is it me that said it? Who said it now? Eh? He said no faith. How is it that you don't have any faith? Ordinarily, would have thought that this ones that follow Jesus, they have faith. Ah, they have faith. Jesus said, see him. Following me is not the show of faith. It is when you are facing circumstance, you will know exactly what your faith is. The level of your faith. He said, no. You no, know the scripture says, if you have a faith, like a mustard seed, very small one, you will tell to this mountain. They did not have faith at all. So they could not even talk to the wind. They did not, they did not resist what the devil was bringing. They were just responding to it. Hey, 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 please, I said, hey, Jesus. Hey. Ah, ah. Person, the wicked, this is your wickedness, now champion. And Jesus woke up, rebuked him and said, You don't have faith at all. Zero faith. I pray that this month you will not operate zero faith. I know you are God's disciples, but I'm praying for you that this month and forevermore, you will not operate zero faith. The world may think you have 100% faith, 99% faith. I mean, because you wear suit and, you know, you speak in tongues and everything. They see you, you are very godly, blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Uh, before God, that checks circumstance, that sees the inward part of man, men may see you 100% and it is possible that God will just see the person 0% that shall not be you Amen. that shall not be you Amen. in the name of Jesus there is a man called Elijah Elijah is he not the one that called down fire he called down fire several times was roasting people alive in the afternoon but one thing happened to this man one which caused Jezebel one day. Jezebel just threatened him. A practical threat. After he has roasted all the prophet of Baal, <laughs> Jezebel had it and Jezebel said, God do so and more if I don't make you Elijah to be like one of these prophet of Baal. The way you kill them, I will kill you. If I don't kill you, I'm not Jezebel. I'm not Jezebel if I don't kill you. As soon as Elisha had it, the man, the, the man, he ran. The prophet took off. <clears throat> Somebody who called down fire. All of a sudden, a woman, a woman, just said, the way you kill these guys, I will kill you. If I don't kill you, I'm, I'm, I'm not Jezebel. He had it and he took off. Ran. He ran that uh, it was only dust they were seeing behind him. In fact, the Bible says he ran and he left his boy. Uh, turn your scripture. Praise God. First Kings. First Kings. You will not run before your enemy. I say you will not flee before your enemies. Your enemies shall flee before you. Look at it. I will just take one to four. Uh, First King chapter 19. Mm -hmm. Good. Just one to four. And Ahab told Jezebel. Verse one. 1 King chapter 19 verse 1 And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and whither how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a message unto Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me and more also if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that he arose and did what? He took off. He went for his life and came to Beersheba which belonged unto Judah and left who there? He left his servant there. But he himself 
went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die and said it is enough oh lord take away my life for i am not better than my fathers you can call, you can read that one later this is somebody who called down fire who roasted bar he deal with them but a woman went exactly to, i will kill you if i don't he swore i will kill you if i don't kill you i'm not just there. he ran and left his servant he became an island on the spot praise god he, you know he, the bible says that it is an island that runs and leaves the sheep are you following me he left his servant this run only me one runner at least not be that they look for praise god the question is where is his faith where is his faith so sometimes the circumstances of life will extract the genuity of your faith the level of your faith the quality of your faith if you like call fire down it's all right but when it is your turn what do you do what do you do it's easy to tell the father you have faith people of god their power in the law the lord is going to change circumstance i'm telling you trust god you gotta trust god when it is your turn everybody will start gathering to be telling you sorry hey pastor do pastor it is well no just take off for one month don't worry we'll take care of church take off. Hey, the person died. Hey, yeah, he's our pastor. Yeah, he's been working very hard. Pastor, you rest. We'll handle church. Rest for one month. Don't come to church. We'll handle church. You two, you now lie down. Everybody coming to greet you at home. Hey, yeah, sorry. Sorry. Meanwhile, you have preached before. Preach you like man. Be strong. No matter what happened, neither height, neither depth, neither thing present or things to come, you shall take off from the love of Christ. And now it's your turn. Pastor, come to church. They tell you to sleep. You too, you are sleeping. But when their own somebody died, you told them to still come to church. Praise God. That's hypocrisy. That is what? That's hypocrisy. Elijah took off. I'm trying to make you understand, God's people, that there are, there are times in life, circumstances will happen. It is trying to check out your level of faith. God is just waiting for you to see what level of faith you have so that he can step in. But most times, we fall on the other side. And God said, okay, he failed. He will repeat the class again. Let me attend to this one. He goes and attend to that one. You will not fail again. You will not fail again. Yeah. Hear me, I'm telling somebody, you will not fail, fail again. Yeah. You know faith can fail. Jesus said, I prayed for you so that your faith faileth not. And meanwhile, that was making mouth. I will die for you. He did not think that. I said, Are you? You? You will deny me several times. Jesus gave a parable in Luke chapter 18, 3 to 8. Luke 18, 3 to 8. And there was a widow in that city, and uh, she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but after he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he be along with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. How? Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, Shall he find faith on the earth? When God comes down to you and says it's now your turn to now deal with your file, is he going to find faith in your file? If he doesn't find faith, 
it takes your file and put under so that it can tend to other file on top. I say you will not repeat class. When the Son of Man comes, if Jesus shows up to your mouth and says, Now it's time for me to, you know, to 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 now deal with your matter. Now open the file, angel. And you just see no faith. First page, no faith. Ah, no faith. Okay, look for the one with faith. Praise God. Because without God, without faith, he can't do anything. You just have to have faith. Faith is a must in the kingdom. Praise God. I'm praying for somebody that the first page of your file shall be full of faith. I said it shall be full of faith. Because when it doesn't matter whether you are a disciple, you are born again, you are anointed, you speak in tongues, you are filled with the Holy Ghost and with fire and everything. Once there is no faith, it's another time. It's another time. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, the question that place upon you and I, if Jesus come now, will he really find faith? Check yourself. So that you need to go and perfect the issue that has to do with your faith. All this, I know how. When the thing now comes to your tongue practically, you don't know again. Check it. Check it. Don't tell people to do when you don't have faith to do. Because when God extracts you too, he finds out that he can't even do anything for you because you don't even believe. And we all cry, Father, perfect all that that concerns me. God said, I am here, daughter. I am here, son. But where is the faith? I need faith. Give me the currency I demand. The currency called faith. Give it to my hands and I will give you that which you desire. It's an exchange, a spiritual exchange. Praise God. I said, Praise God. We must be mindful to always live by faith or with faith. We must not be a generation of people, a generation of children that the Bible calls children in whom there is no faith. Let me read the scripture for you quickly. Let me round up there. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 20. Somebody is blessed today. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 18 down to 20. But Jeshurun wax fat and kicked. Thou art waxing fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. Look up here. Some of us, when God begins to give you some kind of grace and begin to put some things in your hands, you begin to live life like somebody that forgets God. You, then that is the time you don't have time for God. That is the time that you say you are busy. That is the time you begin to give God all manner of excuses and all that stuff. Because when you did not have the blessings of God, you did not have those excuses. But now God has blessed you. You are now having excuses. You have now fat. You have now become fat. You are now flourishing. You were not driving car before. You are now driving. You were not you have your paper before. Now you have your paper. Now you have to go to offices. You now begin to tell God and tell the church that you are busy. Don't you understand the law of this country does not allow you to have time for stuff like that. You have now become fat and you are now kicking. Watch this. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abomination provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils not unto God. And to gods which they knew not. To new gods that came newly up whom your fathers feared not. Look up here look up here and some of us after living that kind of life you will now be able to gather money when you gather money you will now go back home when you go back home they put you into a traditional party you enter into a traditional party when you get there they will now tell you that well it doesn't matter just do this one you do this one you do this one and then you will give money to somebody who sacrificed to devil you are the same person who is sacrificing because you gave the money for them to go and make a sacrifice on your behalf you say you are not the one who did it but somebody went to go and do it for you but you paid the money you have sacrificed unto other gods 
He said, Of the rock that beget thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them. He did not perfect that which concerns them. He abhorred them. May God not abhor you. He abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughter. And he said, I will hide my face from them. Ah, hear me somebody. God will not hide his face from you. I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a generation. Children in whom what? Children in whom? No faith. Children that has no faith. Children in whom is no faith. Not that they have small faith. They don't even have faith at all. At all. Zero faith. Disciple, zero faith. Don't come into that generation of people that has no faith. They go to church, we know. They are deacon and deaconess and pastor and archbishop. We know. They have all the title. They have the wear color. They, they, we know. We know. They are, they, are, they are chieftains, they are elders, they are everything. We know. We know that one. But, 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 but do they have faith? They are a generation in whom they are children, no, but a children generation that has no faith. God said, Twe, I spit you out of my mouth. You are not mine. God will not reject you. I said, God will not reject you. That is why the prayer of some people is an abomination unto God. They stay on a wrong ground and they are calling God. God cannot come. The place is filthy. He's filthy. He's an holy God. Hallelujah. So, clean up God's people. You got to have faith in you. Practical faith. And an, an, an unadulterated faith. The type of faith that is not dependent on anybody or any circumstance. Only in God. Faith. Jesus said, have faith in God. Have faith in who? I can't hear you. Have faith in God. That is in Mark chapter 11 and verse 22. Have faith in God. Not have faith in any man. Have faith in God. Not in any circumstance. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Keep your eyes in God. The one who is called the author and finisher of your what? Of your faith. Keep your eyes on him. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Jesus healed he healed some, some blind men. Praise God. He cried unto him. I'll read that scripture and let's pray. Matthew chapter, chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 27. This month is your month it's the month that God perfect that which concerns you but look at what the scripture says Matthew chapter 9 and verse 27 down to 28 and when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him crying saying thou son of David have mercy on us and when he was come into the house the blind man came to him and Jesus said unto him, Believe ye, do you have faith? Believe ye that I am able to do this. They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. Can I hear an amen? According to you, do you believe me? Yeah, yeah, I believe you. Said then, then the one who perfects man, who perfects the things that concern, said then as long as they 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 acted their faith, he said then he touched their eyes, and as he did, they saw. He said, let it be. Should you be deceiving me? Should you be talking out of the fact that because I asked you, he said, let it be according to your faith. If I ask all of us now, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Say, yeah. What do I have to say? 
let it be according to your faith because God knows you he knows where your faith is I don't know but God knows praise God he said let it be according to your faith so if and I'll say let it be according to your faith maybe out of ten nine people they saw it only means that the faith of the one person with that remaining it was a zero faith even though everybody said yes I believe and God is the one that answers a man He's the perfecter. So, he's the one that decides who has faith and who does not have faith. The word of God has come to you. You know yourself. You know which area. You know the circumstance that robs you of faith. And you know the area you want God to reach out onto. I want you to rise up on your feet now. I want you to talk to God and say, Lord, let there be no circumstance in this world that will rob me of my faith my faith in you let no circumstance in this world rob me of my faith in you lord let it not be with let it not be zero faith with me and somebody pray here right now
testimonies is not far.